God bless you, family. King Jesus bless you. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, of course, I want to say thank you guys. I, I put a post out earlier just requesting prayer. You know, living in these last days, persecution increases um, out there in the world. And for me, it was just kind of felt and experienced today. And for me, first of all, yeah, again, like your prayers helped a lot because a fear for me is like I never want to revert and get in the flesh, you know, when um, when I'm standing up for like righteousness and what is right. And I mean, I'm just, I'm not perfect yet. <laughs> I'm not glorified yet. I'm not like Jesus uh, fully, just quite yet. You know, none of us are. So that's always a fear I have. So your prayers helped, I think. Um, I still stood up for righteousness and uh, had some clear communication about the situation I needed help with. But yeah, it was it was it was maddening and frustrating. And uh, your prayers are potent and powerful. So man, when I see you guys up in glory, you're all getting hugs from me. I love you guys so much. Like. I seriously do. We're the body of Christ. You know, I'm the little toenail, but you guys are like the bicep and you guys are all the good, <laughs> the, the great parts, you know, and I'm just the, um, I'm just happy to be on the body and I'm so thankful for you guys. I love you um, because we're like, we're, we're one in Christ. You know what I mean? Um, so I love you guys so much. I appreciate that. And yeah, even the spirit kind of moved me uh, this evening. I told Kim, I said, hey, let's uh, let's just worship the Lord, you know. We talked and processed about these challenges. And uh, then it made me think of King Jehoshaphat. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And they praised the Lord. They worshiped. And uh, the Lord fought for them and helped them, <clears throat> right? So uh, we did that. And it perked me up. It revived me. I said a prayer after our worship. I thank the Lord in advance for how he's going to help uh, me in my uh, challenges, the persecution I'm facing, and just um, just showing me the path, and thanking Him in advance, and saying, "Lord, um, you know, just just praying to the Lord, just speaking to Him from the heart," and it felt so good. So, in these last days, right, we have to apply these biblical principles and tactics and techniques. Uh, so important again to be in the Word, so we can remember these things and be like, you know, I'm gonna do like so and so did, like with the worship tonight. It came pretty natural, and it was a few months ago when I started like more implementing like let's worship let's just do this at home on tv let's get some worship music on there with some lyrics and just do it <clears throat> so def definitely just call to your remembrance to uh put into implementation some of these things we learn from scripture and uh we need to be creative in this regard in these last days to uh just function well and to uh, navigate because uh, it's difficult and some days it feels like the furnace is turned up <clears throat> in the challenges that we have, but, um, we have, we have the word of God, so that will help us. All right. So more harbingers of the end times, right? Um, I wanted to speak briefly about two that I noticed one from an article today and one from some news that's been in the last couple of weeks, both, I believe are harbingers of things to come. So a harbinger, I think the first one we had and a harbinger being that, that thing or event that, that, is like a sign or a symbol. Um, this from the Lord, and this is of things to come. Um, you know, right? So th there's no coincidences. There's no oh that happens. Like, you know, I mean, press or some things, but I mean, on these grander levels, these things where it's like, okay, this is something. Like for example, on September 11th, I believe that was like a harbinger. Like America struck, attacked, um, and even like what all the politicians were telling people to say, hey, we're gonna. They quoted that Isaiah 9, 10, 11, somewhere around there. <clears throat> and uh, they said, we're going to come back stronger. And not knowing, you read another verse or sentence, and it's saying, you know, it was the pride of the Israelites who were saying, we're going to do it better. Instead of them just being like, Lord, we repent. We're sorry. Um, we have been sinful. We have uh, had spiritual adultery, worshipped other idols. Forgive us. Come, Lord. You know? That's what America should have done. Instead, they're like, no, we're going to come back stronger, right? Harbinger there. The Francis Scott Key Bridge, the man who penned the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem of America, a harbinger, that bridge destroyed, right? Just recently, a few months ago. Uh, the Eagle Pass, 
Texas, where all the invaders have come in through um, our border. Uh, Eagle Pass, Eagle, the symbol of America, of freedom. Um, it, it, it's not by chance, you know, I sense that <clears throat> that is the point, that focal point where all these invaders, that the enemy has come into America through Eagle Pass. They passed through Eagle Pass. Uh, the whole LGB, etc. lunacy, saying you can be a different thing, person than you are, a different gender, right? God made a male and female, uh, and they flip it and they say, no, be what you want to. Uh, just that lunacy that has come into our culture, into our schools, into the White House, a harbinger of just, this is not pleasing to the Lord. The Lord calls these things an abomination. <clears throat> so this is a harbinger. This is straight out of Deuteronomy as well. When you disobey, you shall be cursed. So another sign, like when we have the, the, the government powers at the highest level applauding this, and uh, like Romans 1 talks about, you do the wickedness and you also give hearty approval to those who do it. Whoa, that, that shows, uh, that's the abandonment wrath of God. You've been given over to that depravity. Harbinger of more that is to come. In the book of Revelation, it also talks about that they did not repent of their murders and thefts and sexual immorality, right? So this is a harbinger of that behavior is going to continue and it's not going to be repented of. Uh, evil men will wax worse and worse. And of course, uh, I did a video a few days ago on that dragon on the Empire State Building. The dragon, symbolic of Satan, the devil, the enemy. The enemy has us ensnared, wrapped uh, he's attacked us. He's entered our country. Uh, the Empire State Building, a symbol of technological and economic strength of America. Wow. The enemy has infiltrated that. <clears throat> yes, he has. Okay, so I wanted to point out those things. And then from End Time Headlines, an article, The entire state of Virginia under drought warning as farmers predict first crop failures in 10 years. Okay, so Virginia home to more than 8 million Americans. So they're having this, uh, these conditions. Farms are specifically concerned about the issue. They'll see the first crop failure uh, poss possibly in 10 years. They have, Virginia has 41,500 farms covering 7.7 .7 million acres. 7.7, .7, biblical number of perfection. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, uh, Virginia is the fifth largest producer of soybeans in the nation. There are going to be crop failures down here this year, and it's something we haven't seen in eight or ten years. It's been a dust bowl. I don't dare plant the seed because it's not going to come up. Okay, etc., etc. Harbingers, uh, signs, they're everywhere. Uh, Revelation chapter 6, the third seal, talks about this, about famine that's coming. And many times the Lord will show a little... Um, snapshot in a smaller version of that which is coming to a greater <clears throat> okay and what has been uh, shall be again there's nothing new under the sun uh, this is coming and in the tribulation to a great amount where it's going to take a day's wage for food uh, but the oil and the wine shall not be touched the elite the rich are going to be fine this is going to be an orchestrated thing this is this current climate push climate crisis push uh, it's all man-made. It's not from you and I, like the powers that ought not be say. It's not from us eating too much beef and driving in our cars. That's not it. Uh, it, it it's them spraying the skies. It's them, um, you know, doing do, using their technology. They have fake technology where they can do fake replicated suns. They can make things hotter. So, anyways, we are not <laughs> unaware of his devices, God's word says. Oh, that's for sure. Okay. Um, so I wanted to talk about that, a harbinger of, uh, of the famine to come. And then also, have you guys heard about this, um, this monolith, monolith in uh, Las Vegas? So it's this shiny looking thing. And there started popping up in um, 2020, right? In a few different places and it and it's akin to the movie 2001 the space odyssey i never seen it but uh by stanley kubrick that dude was deep in the secret societies 
and these guys worship the devil, and uh, these demons tell them things. They, they have them do the predictive programming in their movies so that we see it back in the 2000s, 90s, 80s, 70s, whenever, and then the devil plays that long game, and then when that thing comes to fruition down the line, people are like, oh, it's just like that movie. And it's, it's, it's a psychological thing. They're more ready to receive the deception. Jesus said in Matthew 24, see that you're not deceived. At the first thing out of his mouth, what's the sign of the end, teacher? Right? So we know that that's their game. That's their MO. That's how these devils uh, are operating. Well, it's interesting. Another harbinger. So what do I mean with this monolith? So from the movie, it talks about the monolith in the movie seems to represent and even trigger epic transitions in the history of human evolution. And in the movie, evolution of humans from ape-like beings to civilized people, hence the odyssey of humankind. Wow, so this harbinger is telling us an evolution lie. They're perpetuating that. They're saying it's a thing, that we came from, from ooze to, to, to fish to reptiles to, to monkeys to, you know, but what does God's word says? We're made in God's image and likeness. Not that we came from something different and became in God's image. No, from the creation. So the evolution lie, <clears throat> it is pushed. It is, uh, it is pushed big time. And in this movie, it was telling, so people are watching it in a, in a relaxed state where their beta um, kind of like wavelengths in their brain can just receive something without them really knowing. They could, they could say, oh, you know, I can discern stuff. I'm, I can watch TV. You got to be careful. Because that can be a brainwashing device when you're in a more beta state to receive things. Next thing you know, you're kind of maybe leaning towards something or being like, maybe that's possible. Just like the devil, you know, in the garden. Did God really say? Start planting those seeds of doubt. Okay? But what I'm saying here is, um, with this whole evolutionary um, lie, it's going to be continued. And in that movie, it was saying, it was showing the people like, this, this weird looking, shiny looking thing is, is showing a, a, an evolutionary thing, the apes to the more civilized humans. So what is it telling us today when we see it? Well, I think it's telling us that, you know, the rapture, when it comes, we're gone. And then you have the Antichrist. And, and Revelation describes who is like the beast. They're saying he's different. We know also from Revelation that three, John says, Behold, I saw three evil spirits like frogs coming out of the dragon, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Like frogs, little little green aliens, right? It's going to be this, I believe that's going to be the angle with this evolutionary thing, and, and hence this thing in Vegas. It, these are harbingers. These are signs to those who are awake and looking. This is letting us know that this is coming, this deceptive lie is coming, where they're letting people know, hey, we're going to the next, <clears throat> the next phase here. The, the alien uh, deception, which are nothing but demons. But they're going to say there's aliens, there's, there's other life on planets and universes. It's all true, just like the movies told us. And uh, who is like the beast? It's going to be understood. He's different. Um, so, yeah, I could say a whole lot about that. But that is what these things are, in my estimation, my spirit vibrates like a tuning fork when I see these things. <laughs> I'm not going to be deceived. Most of my life I was deceived thinking I was okay. So now that the Lord has saved me about eight years ago, he's blessed me with discernment. Uh, he's blessed me with different skill sets that, that we all are wired differently. <laughs> and for me, it's Bible prophecy. My discernment is high. I have a discerning eye to most everything in life. And um, I think that's good. We have to be careful. We live in occupied enemy territory. Satan is the God of this world. Paul writes this by the Holy Spirit. So I'm saying a lot, but I'm saying these harbingers are out there and uh, we need to be looking for it. And guys, just to close, I also want to reiterate kind of what I said. We need to uh, implement these, these creative tactics from the word, like the worship that the, the spirit led me to, to embark on tonight. I needed that to humble myself and reach out and, and put a post online, as you guys saw, asking for prayer. We need to do these things. Humble yourself and the Lord will exalt you, right? Make your request be known. Knock and the door shall be open. I did that. I asked for help. You guys helped me. That grace sustained me. 
Um, the scripture also says, praise the Lord, uh, you know, in good, in bad. Um, you know, communicate with him. Give him that due. These are repetitions of building our faith too, saying like, you know, normally when we're going to fret and be fearful and need to plot and scheme and try to figure something out, let's put that on pause and start with praising the Lord. Um, right? That's a great place to start. It's so wonderful. And it really does build one's faith. My faith has been strengthened where I'm like, Lord, thank you. Like perhaps he's given me a little mile marker test and, you know, he saw me get through it. He, he refined me a bit. Now, cool, let him level me up and, and give me more strength and stamina for the other things that shall come. Because we're in birth pain, so we know these things will get harder, but we also know we're building that strength and endurance. So when they come, they're not going to even perhaps feel as, as great as the world might see a thing and be like, that's a lot. But we tell them by our testimony, the Lord has been building me up. He's been faithful. I've seen it for years. So when this great thing came, I can acknowledge on paper that was a great thing, but I felt good. I felt powerful. I felt wise and Holy Spirit filled and I was able to be a blessing to other people when the old me would be able to do nothing but hold myself up in my home and feel bad or whatever it might be. So let me give you that exhortation, guys, in closing to uh, continue to be in your word, have an eye for those little tactics and techniques that we can implement in our real world situation. There's so many and if you guys read your scripture with like, you know, a highlighter in hand and a pen and you mark it up and interact with it, it'll help perhaps you to um, retain that information better, store it up in your heart and get into your head and into your mouth in remembrance. And uh, I wanted to say that to you guys. And I pray it blesses you tremendously, guys. So, all right, keep your discerning eyes out there. Uh, keep in your word. Look for these harbingers. Like I've said many times, the Lord is, he is continuously speaking to us, winking at us, showing us 33%, or, you know, about a third of scripture is Bible prophecy. The Lord likes to tell us things, likes to communicate, doesn't leave us there with no idea. We have a good idea. We have the mind of Christ. We have the word of God. We have the Holy Spirit to uh, just help us decode all of this stuff. So I hope I encourage you tremendously because I felt like I was getting my my uh, backside beat up today, my butt kicked, and um, the Lord pulled me through it. You guys helped and played a part as well. All right, so thank you guys for watching uh, my video. I appreciate it. Uh, please do quick hit the thumbs up on this video and please share this video. Uh, King Jesus willing, I'll see you next time, guys. God bless you.